Hey everybody, it's Mike Frieder here with On Call Compliance Solutions, and I'm back with another Compliance Tip of the Week. Today, we're talking about cyber incident reporting for DFARS, NIST SP-800-171, and CMMC. So hey, if you're a defense contractor who's feeling overwhelmed, tired, and alone, trying to understand all of this DFARS, NIST SP-800-171 and CMMC compliance stuff on top of an already colossal workload, if you feel like you're drowning in the hundreds of pages of confusing legalese and hard to understand techno mumbo jumbo, or if you just need help connecting the dots for the leaders in your company between getting compliant and how it can lead to growth and higher profits, if you're like, oh my gosh, Mike, that's me, and you're screaming and you're jumping up and down and you're pointing at yourself, I got great news. You found your home here at On-Call Compliance Solutions, where we will help you transform into your company's on-call compliance hero. You're going to want to stick around to the end on this one. Now, let's jump into it. So if you've had a, if you've had a breach, all right, maybe ransomware, maybe someone's email got compromised, a computer got lost or stolen, okay, now what? We know we got a report, right? Well, it might be high time to hike up your pants, tighten your belt, and go to work on letting the DOD know exactly what happened so that if there is follow-up needed, the good guys can come and take action. So what should you expect? I'm gonna give you a rough game plan that we like to follow here at On Call when advising our clients on handling cyber incidents. So here we go. First, we get on the phone and help our client assess whether or not there has really been an incident that needs to be reported on. In many cases, breaches may be able to be verified or contained and then mitigated before there's any real actual exposure to the outside world. There are lots of examples of this, but one recent incident that comes to mind is an incident we helped a client handle with UPS, okay? UPS lost a laptop loaded with CUI belonging, uh, being shipped to an executive. Of course, we began to ask the question, well, did UPS actually say they lost it? Or what's the real status right now? After a quick phone call, UPS was refusing to actually say the package was lost and instead stated that they were unable to locate the package. Hmm. So we recommend they hold off until UPS could verify they actually had in fact lost control of the package. Now, oddly enough, about a week later, the package was found in a shipping center in the wrong state and put back in the conveyor belt to its rightful destination. Still sealed, no incident report. Okay, so again, first thing is determine, is there actually an incident? Did it really get lost? Now, once it's been determined that yes, information has in fact been lost, compromised or damaged, a la ransomware, it's time to reach out to whoever has the medium assurance certificate you bought when you became compliant so that you could access DibNet and actually report the incident. No idea what on earth all of this is? Oh boy, time to give us a call. I'll leave a link to, the, to one of our websites where you can help, uh, help uh, yeah, uh, again, link below in bio. That's what I really meant to say. Whatever I just said before, eh, screw it. Now, I'd love to show you a screenshot of what's inside DibNet Cyber Incident Reporting Site, but unfortunately, the whole thing is actually marked F-O-U-O, which I cannot help but, you know, myself personally laugh about that because it's where you go to report a cyber incident. Regarding CUI, which is supposed to be the replacement name for F-O-U-O, right? So, so again, just to kind of catch up, right? CUI is a program that was designed to replace all of the marking and titling under F-O-U-O, so really, the idea that you go to a site that's marked FOUO to report on a CUI breach is kind of funny because FOUO shouldn't exist anymore and it really should be a CUI restricted site. Anyway, I think it's kind of funny, but that's because I'm a government compliance nerd. So why would you use an FOUO site to report the loss or breach of CUI, which is supposed to be replaced? Anyway, all I can say is about that is uh, as logical as UFOs beaming down FOUO and marking all the CUI. Okay, so uh, you fill out the form and you file your cyber incident. Okay, what happens next? Well, the answer is not much. It will go to the government, they're gonna analyze it, and they're gonna make a call on what to do with it. Most likely, you're probably getting a phone call or an email back pretty quickly, depending upon the severity of what may have been compromised, and there will ultimately be a decision on whether or not the DOD wants to do a forensic investigation on your IT systems. So yes, snap on those latex gloves because they might be going in deep, ladies and gentlemen. We're talking full-blown military personnel visiting your office, taking images of all of your stuff and asking very probing questions. Okay, or it might be as simple as some emails back and forth or a phone call or two to explain the situation and just how bad it is. Each situation really does highly vary and lots depend on the information you may have had in your system. So it's very important in your system security plan to know exactly what information may have been where. Also, be prepared. They will likely want to see network documentation, including your system security plan. 
and potentially your plan of action milestones to understand the vulnerabilities that may have gotten you here. The DoD is going to really want to understand what was put in jeopardy. Now, one of the biggest keys to success and minimal business interruption here is cooperation. Okay? Hopefully, you have a backup system which allows you to go and pull system images and just hand them over, in which case it can all go pretty quickly, right? If you actually look at the DFARS law, it's DFARS 252.204-7012, it actually calls out the idea of system images. So just give them what they asked for, move on, while better securing your system assuming you are compliant. Where it gets messy is if you just can't hand those backups over and they, you can't give them the images they legally require you to have as a part of DFAR 7012. Again, I won't go into specifics because each situation is different. What I am saying is if all of this stuff sounds like a whole bunch of mumbo jumbo and you're not really sure what all this means, it's time to call on call. Now, other questions I get asked are, Mike, if I report this, are they going to stop my work on the contract, revoke it or cancel the contract, etc.? All those worst case scenarios that we all fear the most. Again, what I will say is each situation is different. There's a chance they could suspend or cancel the work, move the project to another vendor, or worse, temporarily shut you down until a third party has come in to help you fix things and then deemed you safe to operate. This is a possibility, but luckily these seem to be cases that are very, very few and far between. The DOD ultimately does not want to penalize or slow down work. That's not their goal. They just want to operate in a way that does not compromise information in the first place, so they will go to whatever means are necessary to make that happen and try and get you back to work. Ultimately, the important thing is to not be scared to report cyber incidents. I think this is very important. The primary motivation is to know what information may not be secure anymore and mitigate that and, of course, go track down the bad guys, right? That's really why they want to do a forensic investigation. They want to understand who did it and then go get rid of them. They're not trying to use cyber incident reporting as a way to stop you from bringing in money, unless doing so presents a continued risk to national security. And look, that may be possible. It really depends on what you're working on. Okay, so hey, at On Call, we take defense contractors who've had this DFARS, NIST, CMMC, ITAR, and EAR information security compliance stuff dropped into their laps like a seagull on a sunny day. And we teach you how to level up and be a proper On Call compliance hero for your company. Eliminating gaps, gray areas, and getting this solved all while showing you how to leverage compliance as your secret weapon to land more defense work with higher profit margins. Now, that's what becoming an on-call compliance hero can do for you. If you're looking for more help getting compliant, our compliance experts are always on call for you. Visit nist800171compliance.com or check out the bio below for links to get help right now. There you can find more information about how we can help, self-schedule time at your convenience with one of our compliance experts through any form on the website, and learn more about our completely done-for-you services that can have you on your way to being compliant in just two to three days. If you love the content we're putting out here for you, help us out with a big thumbs up on that like button, or even better, smash that subscribe button to get the latest compliance content as soon as our compliance nerds roll it out. So until the next compliance tip, my friends, stay safe and secure out there, and hit us in the comments below to let us know what you'd like to know more about when it comes to information security and compliance. I'll see you on the next one.